I'm really excited to get started with this week 23 of a study in 1 Corinthians. But first, I want to explain to you what just happened in this ministry. This ministry is, is, or this podcast rather, is recorded. It's about seven weeks ahead. And, And this is, you're hearing this in February of 2023. It's being recorded in December of 2023. But just at the time of this recording, we we uh, just this week uploaded over 400 different podcast episodes to a company that is doing that is putting our podcast in in over 11,000 different uh, uh, tablets that are, that are being distributed over uh, into 77 different facilities throughout this nation. This this is a this is an open door. We've been we've been talking about this and been waiting on it. And the Lord has opened the first door, and this is me. This is the first eleven thousand of, of many hundreds of thousands of tablets that this podcast is going to go on. These Thursday night meetings, we're we're being able to video them at our church and to put them on Facebook Live. But these are being videoed. And and putting on put on DVDs to send into the to a couple of state Tennessee state prisons that that hopefully we're going to get an open door to all the state prisons. But these these podcasts that we're talking about, and all these tablets, honey honey, we're they, this is going out, and hundreds of thousands of people are going to be able to hear what God's word says. And this is the first eleven thousand tablets. That's going to be get get distributed all over seventy seven different jails and minister or jails and, and prisons throughout this nation by this one company. Now we've got we've got invitations out to a lot of other companies just like that, it's telling them that hey we're we'll be more than happy to send you our content if you'll put it on there. And there I'm I'm just believing God's fixing to open doors wide open for us, and it, that's just going to. You might make us more busy, and oh, I thank God for what He's doing. So I want to thank God and give Him all the glory for what is happening in this in this prodigal son ministry, in prodigal son ministries, so so that others can get hold of this word. Uh, these these incarcerated individuals all over this nation are get, are getting God's word through the truth, through what God is doing through this podcast, and oh, I thank God for it. I want to thank all the partners for doing that, for helping us, sowing into this ministry to help us do what we're doing. And it's that, that's to have the resources to to put these put this stuff on here. We've got an opportunity to go on a a, a video. It's like YouTube, but it's it it's it's on these tablets also. And and what it is, there's other different companies, and they're out, they're they're spread out all over. But but this company is is uh, allowing us to put these these videos on there that will reach 1.2 million inmates. 1.2 million inmates, but it's going to cost a lot of money to do it. It right now, starting out, they say it's going to cost us fifteen hundred dollars a month just to put them on these tablets. So we're asking you today, if if you've never been if you've never been a partner of this ministry, so into this ministry because we're putting God's word out, we're putting His truths out, so the world can get a hold of what He is doing in this nation through ministries like this to teach people who they are in Jesus Christ. I want to bring you my prayers for every person, including myself, on this planet. Every person that walks the face of this planet, I pray that they have our eyes open to the love, the mercy, and the grace, and the goodness, and what God is saying in His Word to us, for us, and about us. You know, Paul gave these prayers to the Ephesians, but I have adopted them. For myself and for every other person that walks the face of this planet, that we could see and understand God's love. Ephesians 1.15 says, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ, who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3, 14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through His mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to Him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, Forever and ever, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. I thank God for all that he has shown me in my life, and all the love that he has shown me through my life, and it's always come through his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Lord, touch my mind and touch my mouth. Help me be the light and the vessel. Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. And I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. All right, we're in the last verse of of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 13. It says, Now abide of faith, hope, and charity, which is love. These three... But the greatest of these is charity. Let me read the uh, the uh, the New Living Translation of First Corinthians thirteen thirteen it says three things will last forever: faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. The Amplified Classic says so: faith, hope, love divide uh, abideth. Let me let me back up. And so faith, hope, love abide. Faith, conviction, and belief respecting man's relations to God and divine things. Hope, joyful, and confident expectation of eternal salvation. Love, true affe- true love, true affection for God and man, growing out of God's love for and in us. These three, but the greatest of these is love. He, Paul said three things are going to last forever, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is God's love. What is that? It's, it's, it's love, true affection for God and man growing out of God's love for and in us, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Well, you know, uh, somebody talked about it yesterday. I think it was my, my pastor. He, he brought it up. I, mean, I know it was. He brought it up. The you know the greatest commandment. Uh, the the lawyer came and asked if he, he was to, uh, what was the greatest. Asked Jesus what was the greatest commandment. Jesus says, "The Lord, the Lord, thy God, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind." He said, "In the second is like unto it to love your neighbor as yourself." He said, "Upon these two hang all the law." And the prophets, listen to me today. The greatest, the greatest thing in this world 
is God's love. It's, it's the love of God to us, for us, and in us. I mean, it, it, God loves you. And, and this is the reason we do these Ephesians prayers five days a week on this podcast, because we want the world to realize and understand that, that God really does love you and care for you. And, and that's the greatest thing that you could ever instill in somebody, that God really does care. He really does love you. That God's been made out to be a tyrant, a tyrant, an unpleasable tyrant, some unpleasable bipolar old man that cannot ever be pleased. That ain't God. That's religion. That's religion, and God wants you to understand that and know that. He wants you to realize that, that he's for you, and, and you realizing who you are in Christ Jesus and, and what, how, just how much God loves you in that salvation, even before, before you were born again, God loved you. From the foundation of the world, God has made a way for you and I to just, I'm talking about, just come through life, come through life unscathed. How? Through the truth in what God's Word says, what God's love wants us to know what he wants us to know through his word. Oh, the greatest thing that you could ever come to realize in your life. I'm talking about before salvation. Uh, the, the love of God will draw you to salvation. And if you'll come to realize the love that God has for you, you're, you're, it's inevitable that you'll be born again. It's inevitable that you'll be born again. And, and if you'll continue to live in that love and walking in that love, and, and and keeping it forever before your eyes and, and finding out what God's love really is mean, that really does mean for me for you. Honey, it'll it'll draw a, it'll put a strength in you that there ain't nothing in this world that you can't overcome or accomplish. I make that statement all the time in the jail. There ain't nothing that you can't do or overcome in this world. If you'll just know and realize the love that God has for you and find out what that love entails for you, what, what, what I'm telling you, find out what God is, is doing and wants you to know in your life about that love. He said the greatest of these three is love. The greatest, the greatest of these three is the love that God has, has put in our hearts through the Holy Spirit coming into our hearts and lives, through salvation. And I want to read that 13th verse of the King James Version again. It says, Now, and now by abideth faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love, or is charity. And, and when we come to understand that, that, that faith in God, faith in God, Works by love. Faith works by love. A hope in God is is not a a wish. It's it's not a wish. It's a it's a confident expectation that 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 God has has got you back. And how are you going to come to that confident ex- expectation of that through God's love? I, I every, everything in a Christian life. Is 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 geared around love. It is if I can say it this way, it's the hub in the middle of a wheel that holds everything together, makes everything work right, makes it turn. You follow what I'm saying? It is the the, the joining point of a Christian life. Love, the greatest of in, anything that you could ever know in your life, the greatest thing that you'll ever understand is God's love. He is mercy, his grace, and his goodness. And I promise you, if you'll come to that conclusion, come to that realization, honey, there ain't nothing in this world, like I say, that you can't overcome or accomplish. Paul wrote this chapter for a reason. You know, yesterday we we read the whole chapter because I want you to to know and understand what, what, what that love really is. You know, a lot of these translations are are kind of vague in it, but when you when you go back and read the uh, 
the Amplified Classic version of that love, that mercy, and that grace, and that goodness, you come to a place in your life, you think, my goodness, what 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 have I been missing all my all my Christian life? You've been missing a lot. Because when when you when you come to realize what God's word is saying and what re- love really does in your in your life, I mean it, it it'll set you free. Let me go back to the fourth verse of the Amplified Classic Version. First Corinthians thirteen four. It says, Love endures long and is as patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy. It is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful, or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but rejoices in right and truth. Love bears up under anything, and everything that comes is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It ho- its, hope and, and are fad- its hopes are fadeless, under all circumstances, it endures everything without weakening. What's it say? Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for tro- prophecy and, gri- and gifts of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it is it will be fulfilled and pass away. For as for tongues, they shall be destroyed and cease as as. For knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and supersede and be superseded by truth. For our knowledge is fragmentary, incomplete, and imperfect. And our prophecy, our teachings is fragmentary, incomplete, and imperfect. But when the complete and perfect total comes, the incomplete and imperfect will vanish away because become inadequate and void and, and superseded. What was Paul saying? He said, "Look, all this, all this touchiness. You ever, you ever met somebody that's just touchy? You know, they're they're looking for something to get mad about. They're looking for something to make uh, make something out of." I'm gonna tell you something. The world's full of people like that. But I'm gonna tell you what'll what'll cure those people for that uh, for that uh, inadequacy or. That, that thing that's, that's wrong in their life, God's love. When they really get God's love down in their heart and in their life and start operating in it. The greatest of these is love. I can't say that any better. The greatest is love, God's love, that has been shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Let that love shine through, because I promise you, faith works by love. And that confident expectation that hope that you have in God will become stronger and stronger through His love and you allowing it to be shed abroad, or, and, or, or rather, you allowing it to come out of you and flow out of you. You can't give enough of God's love the way that you'll run out, I promise you, because it's always there. It'll always replenish itself. Why? Because God never fails. Love never fails. We talked about that yesterday. Glory to God. Now, I've got a question for you today. Are you born again? Have you been born again? Have you made Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Romans 10 and 9 says, If you'll confess him with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, confess Jesus as Lord of your life, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. It says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? He will. I promise you he will. Glory to God. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today. Confess him as Lord and Savior today and watch him change your life forever. All right, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. 
I want to thank everyone that sows into this ministry. I want to thank everyone that, that listens to this ministry. I want to thank everyone that shares this, this ministry, this, this podcast on your social media. I haven't say, said a whole lot about that here lately, but share these podcasts. Share them so others can be set free through the truth in God's Word. Not my ways, but what God is saying in the truth in His Word. Thank you. Thank you. If, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you for all that you do, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do and send us out to do it, and that is to give His Word away all over this planet free of charge. Oh, I thank God for people that sow into this ministry faithfully to help us do what God has commissioned us to do. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Now, don't forget, go to our website and get in touch with us. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. I want to hear what you need him to do, because I promise you, he's got an answer to those prayer requests, and it'll always be in his word. Download our app and get this podcast on a a six-day-a-week basis straight to your phone. Glory to God. Go to our website. Get in touch with us. I thank God for people that are being set free through the truth in God's Word. It's the-prodigalson.com.